not gonna believe this. I'm saving all of this time. I can't believe it. I just got out of Lowe's. I'm rescuing all of these pots and plants. Um, they had them. I put it in my Instagram story how they were gonna throw them away and I cannot believe it. I t asked and I said, I just wanted to know if you're, you could sell me some of the pots if you're gonna throw them away. And they said, well, we can't sell them to you because we've already marked them like we're gonna throw them away. We've marked them. So basically he said, you can have it. And then I said, how about the plants? If there's some that I see that are salvageable, and I, I love plants, I would hate for you to throw them away. Do you think I could take some of the plants? And he said yes, and I'm in shock, and I'm so happy because they were gonna throw all of this away, and um, we're gonna save some plants. I'm excited. Uh, these pots are perfectly fine, and I can use them and gift them to a friend, so I can save a lot of money. And I'm so glad I'm not going to the trash can. And there's some plants here. Let me show you that I think. Well, this one is. Uh, it's not the philodendron. Hope. I have to look it up because my hope's a little different than this. It's like a ruffled edges. Maybe we can insert the name when we look it up. Uh, but I don't have this one. It's really dry. There were so many plants that were really dry. But I think with some water, this one's gonna be fine. And we have a Diffenbachia. And you guys, I don't even own a Diffenbachia. So this is my first one. <laughs> my first one. And, um, Again, a lot of dryness. It's 100% dry, dry, dry. It's a self-watering pot. It was $15.98 and I got it for free. Uh, so definitely I'm going to um, go home and clean these babies up and show you how they look after. Um, we have here an Anglonema. And uh, this one is a really pretty one. I've been seeing it arrive at the stores and I have never seen this one. It has like a whitewash look to it. And of course, a lot of dryness. It's, it's yeah, super dry. So, but I'm so excited to clean her up. And let's see what else we got. Look at this one, guys. It's a Maharani. I think it's a pink, pink stem, right? I think that's what it's called, an alocasia. Why did I say Maharani? It's an alocasia. But I don't have this one. I've never had this one. Uh, but there's still some life to it really dry again Really like a hundred it's like doesn't weigh anything. So with some watering this should pick pick up check out the pot <laughs> Isn't this the prettiest pot? And um, Don't go in there yet. I'm gonna show it Will you some surprise so I can show? <laughs> okay, so there's this terracotta pot, which is, I think, gorgeous. And then there was this air plant and this Christmas um, <laughs> little feet here. And obviously it's completely 100% healthy, the air plant, but it's glued in here. So obviously, cause they weren't gonna sell this anymore. They were gonna throw it away. This was originally $8. I love air plants. This baby's gonna be fine. We're gonna pull it out of there uh, gently. Where was, oh, there's another air plant that I, that I stuck in here. Little air plant and it's completely fine. This one came in one of these little holiday, also little um, pots. I got one, this one that had gray. I thought, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and got here a uh, poly, alocasia poly. And look, look how dry this is. <laughs> what, she can still live. And I had one of these back in my beginning of my plant journey, like two years ago. And at some point she went downhill. But I think it's such a beautiful allocation, the veinings. So, so exciting to see the after. Also the self-watering planter was $15.98. And then I think the last one here to show you Is this one this is a calithia and it has a really nice pot as well 
This one we're going for $28. Because this pot is just beautiful. It has like a self-watering. And there is a Calithia here and it's what is she called? Dottie? I don't know. I don't remember the names of Calithias anymore. I haven't bought any in a long time. Uh so this one, it just is burgundy. Okay. This one is hard, huh? Med med medallion? Med huh? Medallion? Medallion? Uh, I don't know. Could be. But this is a hard plant. This one, I don't have high hopes for it. It could, and if I put it maybe in my Kia greenhouse with high humidity and watering, yeah, it could make a comeback. Uh, but just in my normal house, these don't do great for a long time. Outside, they do great. Uh, it is winter though, as you can tell, gray day, <laughs> and it's raining, but. So, this is my cheapest, cheapest, plant purchase to the date I spent zero dollars and um, I got a good 10 pots and about seven plants and uh, I'm excited for the rescue process that's ahead of me so yay I'm so thankful thank you uh, um, so anyways I'll insert later on how they look when I clean them up Okay, we're home. It's nighttime. I'm gonna have them outside in my front porch, and um, at least I'm gonna water them. <laughs> I went and I got some water because these babies, I'm telling you, are so dry. Tomorrow I'll be able to look at them a little bit closer. I didn't see any pests from looking at them at the store, but it was all kind of done quickly, so tomorrow I can check them better. Um, but definitely need some water. This one, oh, the salicacia was so, so dry. All of, all of them. So at least, you know, I can see the explanation to why they're looking so ugly. It was definitely not, it was definitely a water need. Look at this Timbakia. I've never had one before. Okay, this will get these babies through the night. I actually don't look at the weather. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be um, too cold tonight because of course under I'm in North Carolina and under 40 degrees, it's too cold. So I'm gonna let them sit with this water. Then later I can come and remove any excess water. But this is definitely gonna start making them come back to life babies come back to life oh there you go standing up needs more soil this one's like lacking soil so i can later on i'll just add some more or transplant it into repot it <laughs> repot it but yeah guys so one two three four five that's six white pots one terracotta one two three four five six plants six plants plus two air plants not bad okay we'll see how these babies do for tomorrow here we are five days later after watering my plants and um, i haven't done anything else other than watering them like you just saw so i was waiting to have time to film it for you guys as i cleaned them up and we see the before and after I'm wait to see the after when they're all cleaned up they look prettier uh, so so far we have an improvement look at this one you saw how floppy it was this one I've been looking up names and I feel like this might be the philodendron for little hope or the Chandri La you guys let me know because the uh, leaves look very much alike online but it took her two days to perk up after 24 hours of watering her she did not perk up and Finally, she's perked up. This one, um, we're gonna get started. We're gonna start just by cutting the dry leaves. Um, cutting the dry leaves, which are not that many, which is wonderful. But I'm glad that it had a few days to just be here at home and adjust. I did have them where they wouldn't touch my other plants so I could observe and see if there was any, any uh, pests on them. So far, I haven't seen anything, but 
I do want to rinse them at the end of this video because I want to wash them, give them a nice wash, and maybe I'll spray them down just in case. Um, so here it is, Philodendron Little Hope, and she has, after five days, she's dry. And I watered her a lot that day, so she's gonna need that bath that I'm talking about. So that's it. This one was so, I'm so happy I saved her because honestly, it's one of the ones that I almost left because she looks so floppy. Um, but I asked my husband, do you think I should get that one? And he was like, yeah, go ahead. I'm glad he did because look at this, she's so alive. Can't believe she was gonna be thrown away. Okay, so my next little plant, now this is the one that's definitely in worse state. This is the Alocasia Pink Dragon. So, supposed to have pink stems. There is just one little leaflet that's standing up. This other one has broken. I think it broke on our way over here, plus it's dry, dry, dry. So we're gonna get rid of all of these, but Alocasias, you know, they can come back completely. So sometimes they even go dormant in the winter. I think this is called the corn, corn. As long as this is in good state and it's not, mushy and it's not 100% dry, it's dried off completely, it can come back. So this one, I have very, very high hopes. I'm just gonna have to keep my eye and making sure she has enough water. That's it, we remove the uglies. And the pot is gorgeous, right? She is dry, dry, even though I gave her water that day. There's a little bit of water there, but that she cannot reach. But this doesn't weigh anything. That's why I know she's dry, dry, even though there's like little drops that stayed in the bottom. She definitely needs that watering that Shara was talking about. She comes with a moss on top. But look at the soil. Look how dry it is. And guys, I watered her a lot. So that means she desperately needed water. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, this is an, uh, an Angonema, guys. Believe it or not, I've never owned an Angonema. Oh, yes, I did. Once. And I gave her away. <laughs> I don't know why, but I did. Um, so I didn't have her very long in my collection. And this one, I thought it was a frosted ghost that a lot, they're coming into the stores right now. That's kind of an uncommon Anglonema that I hadn't seen before. But then when I'm looking at the pictures, I'm not hundred percent sure. She also looked like some an Anglonema called white brain. So you guys let me know what you guys think. If you guys that have Anglonemas, collect Anglonemas, that love Anglonemas, let me know what you think and can you please share care tips because i'll be honest with you that one anglonema i had she lost a lot of leaves and i wasn't sure why it wasn't the beginning of my plant journey so i'm excited to try again uh because i do I, they're supposed they're known to be easy plants so i don't understand why i had trouble back then so i'm now that i have a little bit more of sense of plant care i'm, I'm excited to to see how she does and hopefully she can come, come back but just taking away everything that looks ugly. Just like that. What a difference it makes. This is so satisfying to me. <laughs> Doing these visual cleanups. It's like when you get some, a person gets like a makeover, like a hair makeover, a clothes makeover, house makeover. It's just excited to do that after. This one is kind of ugly, so I'm gonna go ahead and, should I? Should I not switch up this one? Because it was kind of yellow. This one, I'd rather start with, yeah. I'll cut in half, there you go. This one, it's kind of yellow, so she's a goner. These all look pretty good, and there's new leaflets opening up right here. So that's exciting. Can you imagine what she will look like in three months? This one is heavy, like she has water. This one does not need another water, but I can definitely clean her leaves up. So that looks better, right? Cleaner. Okay, that's that one. Um, this is uh, Calathea, and this is uh, Rosa Picta, I believe. And she is the one that, I'm gonna like spray a little bit my between plants just in case there was some kind of bug or whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of the shriveling leaves. This is no surprise, Calitheas, if you let them dry, they definitely do not like it. They will not resist. Versus like the Philodendron Hope, it was 100% dry and very little yellowing leaves. You see the differences, how this plant is so much easier. It withstands when you can't, don't water it in time, it's forgiving versus the Calithea. Um, and it almost seems like the Anconema is not very forgiving because it turned, a lot of leaves turn yellow. 
the alocasia definitely is not forgiving. The alocasia does not like to be dried up. So this is a prime example so you can learn what plants can tolerate you being a little bit late and which ones are not. I'm gonna just take that one off. I'm gonna take this one off, guys. This one off. I'm gonna leave, I guess, those two just because I wanted to have enough so it can um, eat in the sun, you know? <laughs> Photosynthesize. So I need some green to photosynthesize. And the price was $25.98 quite a bit because it comes with this beautiful pot but let's see if it needs more water after five days it feels moist there's water condensation so this one should be fine but i'm sure in two three days she's going to need a watering and no i cannot let her dry if i want her to come back we are in february low humidity it's a hard time for these plants Galifia is like having high humidity so if she can make it through the spring, she'll be so happy. And if I were to pop this in my backyard where she gets shaded, high humidity in the summers here in North Carolina, Calatheas do wonderful. A lot better than inside my house. Okay. And then we have this um, Diffenbachia, guys. First time ever I have a Diffenbachia. That's pretty crazy, right? I don't know. Uh, I had not seen the one I wanted yet. Now here, this might be a mealy bug. Because that's what I was looking at earlier. It almost looks like a dry mealybug. Like a dead mealybug. You see that? So that kind of makes me think there could be. I was looking at it earlier. This one's broken. I'm going to cut it. But I didn't see more. But definitely this one should get sprayed. Washed. There's definitely not an infestation. Okay, now what is the name of this, Divenbachia? I need your help. I was looking it up and I could not find... Well, I can't, couldn't find one. Like my little Google, I use like a Google lens to help me identify plants. And it did not, I couldn't, it didn't pull up anything that looked exactly like it. I, although I definitely don't think this is uncommon. I think it's a com very common one. But I will need, guys, I know for you guys it's going to be very easy, some of you guys, to tell me what kind this is. I like to know every plant in that I have, what is its name. And I would highly recommend that for all of you guys that are getting into the plant care uh, life, plant mama life, plant parenting life, because that's the way you know how to take care of your plants. You have to know the name so you can research your plant and know what it likes and give it according to what you learn. You can't just assume, unless you can't find a name that you try your best, right? But if you can find information, that's definitely what's helped me in my plant journey, is <laughs> looking up YouTube videos and finding out and learning and researching or just Googling it. Um, so there you go one more that's broken here how does that look guys it look better she is already giving you leaflets that are unfurling and she definitely this is in a, in a soft watering look at it i never bought one of these but see how it has like that little extra space and this uh, little rope so it can suction whatever extra water stays on the bottom and it can grab according to what it needs this was pr priced at around $16. And the pot is made out of plastic, but just because it's a self warning pot, it was priced, I wanna say a little higher. But I'm glad it's in this. I won't have to worry about it. I don't know if different buckets like to dry um, between waterings. I'm, I'm thinking this one's never gonna be too dry because it's gonna be able to suction as needed, but usually they do great in self watering. Um, Pots. Okay, so there you hear it's another soft watering pots. It's an alocasia poly. And this one definitely is missing soil. <laughs> Look at that. As if it tipped over. I think when we got it, it was like tipped over completely, right? It was tipped over completely. Okay, I'm gonna clean my little thingies here. Okay. Okay, so this one is the one I wanted to add soil to. Um, soap water and planter. Ooh, okay. So I have my soil here mix that I had ready. I'm gonna take off this leaf. And I'm checking it. These have a higher risk of having spider mites. So I'm checking for webbing in any small little thing that I might see crawling. I don't see anything. I'm taking the back of the leaf. I don't see anything.
Is that moving or not? You see the little white dots? There could be, there could be something. I see little, little, little white dots there. Could be a little bit of a spider mite. So, uh, definitely gonna go take care of bath, give her a bath. I love how these leaves unfurl. And I did have one of these in the beginning of my plant journey. And uh, at some point, I know I didn't water it in time and a lot of leaves dried up. So definitely don't let this one fully dry. Don't forget about this one, it's not forgiving. <laughs> Locations are usually not forgiving. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab some soil. And I'm just gonna fill it up very easily. Now what do I have here, I have some maybe 50% of a uh, soil potting mix that I buy from my local nursery that's good for indoor plants. And I added perlite and I added orchid bark. This plant though, it's an alocasia, you know, she likes to stay moist. This is actually very, this soil dries really quickly the one I'm adding. I think she could even do better if she had something that didn't dry as quickly. But at this point, this is what I have and it's not gonna be bad because she's gonna be indoors so she's not gonna get dry so quickly. Second of all, it's a self-watering planter that's gonna grab the water it needs when it needs it. Or if I just had the soil, I just have to keep an eye on it and water it more often, you know, if it don't let it completely dry. I would say I would, I'm gonna dry it when it's getting closer to the dry section when I actually use my water meter, but not wait until it's completely dry. Like I do a lot of my philodendrons, monsteras, hoyas. Okay, there it is. So let's go give them a bath and that's where they're gonna get their water as well. I'm gonna go make sure my shower tub is ready for these babies. Okay, first I'm testing the water. I'm making sure that it's not too cold or it's not too hot. Especially in winter, we don't wanna freeze them. They are alive. So now I'm gonna, this is the one that I was wondering if it had spider mites. So I'm gonna make sure that I wash every leaf. So I'm washing it with water. But then I feel really important. I actually have dish soap in my hands <laughs> that I previously got. So I make I do this little number. I feel like you have to break down like any webs and physically kind of like just wash out the spider mites as much as you can. And um, that's gonna guarantee a little more success. And so far I've had very good success with removing spider mites. So I'm happy that they're not, they don't scare me as much. When I just started my plant journey, guys, I was so scared of spider mites and that I was, what if I have a little spider mat crawling up on me and then I'm gonna transfer it to another plant? Now I realize, you know, having some kind of pest here and there is normal and we just treat them and don't let it stress you out too much in your life. At first it did and that's not fun. Plants are to have fun. Plants are not to feel so stressed, you know? Uh, just, you know, don't completely forget about your plants. If they have need a little shower, we'll shower them. And they need a little pesticide that whatever you decide to use. Pesticide? Is it called pesticide? <laughs> uh, whatever you use to treat little bugs on plants, then do it, you know? Wash it. Washing my hands, removing what's there. Wash, wash, wash. Front and back. Front and back. It's getting a little hot. Okay, we don't want hot. Okay. That's it. Now I'm gonna put some water. I needed some water, so I'm gonna go ahead and water it. This soap water in top. Okay, so this one, the plant didn't need that much water, so I'm just hitting the leaves overall. Just trying to wash off whatever dust, you know. Water is always good because in nature, Plants get rained on, so they get washed, the dust gets washed, 
whatever pest is growing on them gets washed and that helps control them so they don't ever have too much that invades if possible. Okay, this one is the one that really needed water. Sorry. There we go. Are you liking it, baby? We're gonna take good care of you. Good care of you. Okay. And this one needed water, so I wanna make sure I put water here in the pot. And then this one here is a Calathea. The one that had the mealy bugs, right? So although I didn't see more, I checked. I just saw that one. Okay, let's go get something to spray them. Did I bring it? I think I brought it. It's right here. So this is what I'm using. Captain Jack's Dead Bug. Um, and this is good for spider mites. And is it good for mealy bugs as well? It says thrips. I have another one that I usually use for um, spider mites. It's Minim. And I actually like alcohol a lot. Like, uh, I sometimes directly spray alcohol my hoyas do fine but let me spray that poly it's over there they're all gonna get, get some of this spray just in case they've been saved i'm so excited to have Treat all these plant babies, giving them some time and love that they were missing. Seems like they had not been watered in a long time, poor babies. But I am excited. This is incredible. One, two, three, four, five, six plants, seven, eight. I didn't show you the air plants. Remember there was air plants within all those plants? These babies, I watered this one. This one didn't need one in water because she looks nice and green. Um, I kind of can tell air plants need water when they start getting a little grayish in color. And I usually don't water my air plants until right now in winter every like three weeks. So um, they've been doing fine. I do have a little collection of air plants. I just posted a reel. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I have an Instagram. It's called Plant Heartbeats and you get to see a lot more of my plant journey. Little chores that I do throughout the day. Plants that I see at the stores. Just for the plant life. If you love the plant life, then follow me there too. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't, please subscribe. Any comment where you share about your plant love um, and feedback, positive, it's always you know really um, nicely appreciated. And I want to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to my channel. You have made me be able to enjoy this hobby even more because I have a lot of plenty friends that I can share it with. Um, so yeah, said you can reach me through my Instagram, send me messages. We can share our plant love with each other. You can send me pictures of your plant babies. I always appreciate it. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed saving the little plants with me and hopefully one day you'll get the chance to do the same. And uh, like I said, you'll keep seeing more of these babies if you follow me. I know some of them will be gifts for some friends that need some plants. A co-worker told me she needed some plants. So I'm happy to, to help other people have a lot of plant babies. Okay, bye!